Hello, and today I'm going to be showing you how you can boost your overclock in a H97M G43. Hope you enjoy. So, to start off with, you may already know the H97 chipset was designed for Intel's fourth generation lineup of processors, so it's now a few years old. However, it's still relatively competitive with the latest Intel processors in terms of performance. The H97 motherboards typically offered overclocking of up to 1.3 volts on the CPU core, or less than that depending on your motherboard manufacturer. And whilst you can overclock with this, you can't push the same limits that people with the Z97 motherboards are able to. However, if you have a H97 motherboard specifically made by MSI, either the H97M G43, the H97 Guard Pro, or the H97 PC Mate, you can unlock something which will allow you to push your overclock further. In 2014, MSI's R&D department leaked a BIOS which allowed further overclocking. This was originally designed for Intel's new Pentium at the time, the G3258, the 20 year anniversary edition. However, using it, you can push your overclock even further on the existing K series chips. There is a disclaimer though. I'm not responsible for any damage you cause to your motherboard. If you follow these steps like I have, you should be fine. But if you do break your motherboard, that is at your own fault. If you're on the H97M G43 motherboard, there is actually a slight glitch in the BIOS that MSI suggests you use. So I don't use that one. I actually use the same one that people with the Guard Pro should be using. There are no major issues in the BIOS. Uh, the only difference is, is that it thinks it's a Guard Pro instead of a 97M G43. That's no real big issue though, as both have very similar features and I don't believe you'll see any performance differences. So, to push your overclock further using this, you need to first make sure you do not have MSI Command Center or Intel's Extreme Tuning Utility installed. You can verify this by pressing your Windows button and start typing command center as you can see nothing comes up and then Intel extreme tuning utility and yet again nothing comes up a few of them do come up you will need to uninstall them as they can interfere with the overclocking process once you've verified that for this to work optimally you'll need two USB sticks Neither of them have to be bigger than a gigabyte, so any USB stick you find lying around should be good enough. On one USB stick, you will want to copy this to it. I'll leave the link in the description. This is the latest BIOS available for the H97M G43. If you have another motherboard, simply go to MSI's website and download the latest BIOS and copy both of these files to the root of the USB stick. Don't copy the folder, go into the folder and copy these two files to the USB stick. Before you do this though, you want to make sure that your USB stick is formatted. So here you can see this is my G volume, which is the USB stick I just plugged in. On format, you need to make sure that it's set to FAT32. The allocation unit size doesn't matter, if, but if you don't want to be risky, just choose default. You won't need to give it a name and then click start. It will take a few moments to complete. And once it is complete, you can simply open this up and copy both of these files just like this. This is then your backup USB stick. If this BIOS fashion does not work, this will be what you'll plug in to use mFlash, which is built into all MSI motherboards in order to flash your BIOS back to a working one. Hopefully you won't be needing this, but it's better to be safe than sorry. Once you've done that, you can unplug it. Once you've done that, take the, the USB stick and plug in another one. I've just done so. And now I'm going to reformat this. FAT32 with the default allocation size. And I'm going to call this one another volume. It doesn't need to have any specific name, you can name it whatever you want. 
although FAT32 does mean that your naming choices are quite limited. Once this is done, you will need to do a different step this time. Instead of copying anything to the root, originally you will need to use something called Rufus. Once it is done, it will simply show ready. You can then press close on this and then it browse back to your USB stick. It'll have a little picture next to it now. And in here you'll have a few files. None of these are too important. These are just free DOS's files. Now I create a new folder and name it BIOS. And inside this folder, you will need to use the BIOS you downloaded off the website. If you're using the 97M or the G43, you want to be using this, the E7923IMS.TK2. If you're using the PC Mate, then you'll have a TK3 instead. It doesn't matter the steps are the exact same for all of them. Simply drag this file in. And also, you will need one last utility called AFUD238. Open that up and also unzip it into this folder. Your preparation is now done. Simply leave this USB stick plugged in still when you go to restart your computer. Or what I recommend using is MSI's Fast Boot utility, which as long as you've got it installed, you can just search for under Fast Boot. And once it opens up, it's on my second screen, so you won't be able to see this. You'll have a prompt that shows fast boot, and you can toggle this between on and off, and an option to go to BIOS. I recommend you click this, and then press OK. You will then need to make sure that all of your settings are set to the default. You can do this by going into the standard settings option on the left-hand side. I'll show something up on the screen. And then you should be able to choose an option called save and exit and restore factory defaults. Choose yes and then save and exit out of the BIOS. Your computer should then restart into FreeDOS. Once you're in there, you'll need to type in the following commands. You'll need to type in, I'll put these on a notepad so you easy viewing, so you can pause at any point and read it. You need to type in CD BIOS as long as you made your name of the free DOS prompt BIOS. You may get a few prompts before you can get to this stage, by the way, just answer the questions. Once you've typed CD BIOS, exactly how you see it, you then want to type in A Feud 238 and then the name of the BIOS. So if you're using the 97MG43 or the Guard Pro, this will be E. 7923ims.tk2. If you're using the other one, you will be a feud238, and instead it will be e7850ims.tk3. It's a run its steps. Whilst it's doing this, it is absolutely crucial that you do not unplug the USB stick, mess with the USB stick. Do anything with your computer, do not turn it off, do not look at it in a funny way, just ignore it and let it do its job. If you interfere with this at any purpose, especially when it says a deleting flash, you may permanently brick your motherboard. And as this is a few years old motherboard now, you may be unable to get any sort of warranty support on this. So it is absolutely crucial that you do not tamper with it whilst it's doing this. Once these steps are done, you'll be able to reboot your computer. To do this, just simply press Control alt delete just press those buttons all at the same time, and your computer will restart. Whilst it's restarting, unplug the USB stick, and then let it run its thing. And if you want to enter the BIOS at this stage, you can press delete. Alternatively, you can just let, try and let it boot into Windows to make sure it's still working okay. Once you're satisfied with that, you can then reboot, enter the BIOS, and under the overclocking options now, instead of only being able to push your V core up to 1.3 and the CPU ring up to 1.2, you can now take these a lot further. I've been able to hit 1.4 volts, although this is highly unrecommended on a 4790K. I sit mine around 1.35 volts. And you might be thinking, well, why would you do this? 
Well, I've been able to boost my processor personally an extra 100 megahertz, and I'm still tampering with it to see if I can push it any higher. Although I do have a few tips once you're in your BIOS. If you're using the H97MG43, there may be some incompatibility issues. I've not personally had any, but do not change the CPU ring frequency. Do not change it to anything. If you set it to 45 or above, it won't post. If you set it to anything, or if you set it to 44 and below, the overclock on the frequency on the actual CPU core does not work properly. And so I just recommend leaving it on auto, otherwise you're going to end up getting into all sorts of headaches. And also, you can now set your um, CPU frequencies per core as well if you wish. Just make sure you change the option at the top from simple to advanced. I'll leave mine on all core then. Personally, if you're looking for a good baseline, try typing in 47 for your core frequency and voltage of 1.35. Assuming you know what you're doing, you'll be able to happily overclock further now. And I hope you enjoyed my guide.